Hi, I'm Lynn Langett for Teaching Kids Programming and we're glad you're here. In this short video, I'm going to talk to you about what Teaching Kids Programming is, why we created it, and how you can use it to introduce kids ages 10 and up around the world to computational thinking with TKP Java. So let's get started. First, I'm going to tour you through our website. Our website you can think of as kind of an index for all the various pieces of content we have to uh, work with kids. So that you can understand how our courseware works, I'm going to actually just start by showing you an example. So here I am inside of Eclipse. This is a customized version of Eclipse, which you get by downloading our courseware and the Eclipse configuration from our site. Directions in a minute. The core concept behind Teaching Kids Programming is we've created a library based on Logo and working with the tortoise and some other concepts and I have a list of references at the end of uh, what our influences were. And the idea is that we've created bridge courseware. This is specifically designed for middle school students so that they've uh, possibly worked with visual programming such as Scratch or Kodu or some other sort of visual programming environment, maybe Lego Mindstorms and they now want to start working with a core language. What we found in our work teaching kids around the world and as professional programmers, because nearly all of us are, that going directly from a visual environment to a full programming language, particularly an OLP language like Java, is really formidable. So we created a fun library that's bridge courseware. So here's some of the core concepts. Each of the lessons has English comments. And you notice that at the end of each line, there are line numbers, and there's a specific reason for that. One of the things that makes learning uh, fun is feedback. And so we've written our recipes in a way that you can uh, translate one line of English into one line of code and then run it and see the results. And that's your validation. So I'll just give you a couple lines so you can see how it goes. So I'm going to do a control space to make a new line. Then I would have the kid read the line, so show the tortoise. And I would say, what is the noun, tortoise? And they would type T-O-R. And in addition to our library, we also try to incorporate best programming practices, which uh, includes use of tools. So we would uh, teach them then control space, which would give a keyboard shortcut for the entire word. Notice also we've carefully written uh, documentation, including graphics and fun jokes and stuff like that, just so the kids can get into the habit of reading the documentation. Then we would tell them to press enter. And then we would say in English, we separate our words with spaces. In Java, we separate them with the period. So to separate the noun from the verb per se. And uh, we would ask them, what's the verb? And they would say show. And then uh, we would say, use the arrow key to go up and down or look actually for that, for that word. And maybe you can start typing it. And so they might start typing SH and then they would actually see it. Now, um, we have carefully done a one-to-one -one translation between the English comments and our library. We've encapsulated uh, Core Java to make the on-ramping easier. And in each lesson, we teach one to three programming concepts. And we start uh, easy, if you will, um, with a one-to-one. -one, and then we slowly move closer um, to the real-world Java, where you'd have you know, regular English, and then it wouldn't exactly match the API. And this is you know, done by design. So then we'd say press enter, and uh, we'd say in English you end your sentence with a uh, period, and in Java you end it with a semicolon. Notice the use here of uh, incorporation to uh, something the kid is going to be familiar with, which is grammar. We purposely are not saying, uh, you know, class or method at this point. This uh, this will come later. Our, the way that we teach is. Um, uh, it's a layered uh, learning, so it's experiential. The kid first experiences it, and then once they're interested in the subsequent lessons, we will layer on the programmatic terms. So then we would say, did it work? And they'd say, well, I don't know how. And we'd say, play it or run it. So we'd click play, and we'd say, okay. And there we would have our tortoise. So yay. Then the next thing we would do is, another habit we're trying to teach is that uh, properly written code is expressive and really shouldn't require a lot of comments. So we would have them delete the comment and we would uh, use a keyboard shortcut to do that, which is uh, uh, in my case of a Mac command D. So then we would have them go to the next line, which not this one because we couldn't see the feedback. It's not moving. We would go down here, say move the tortoise 50 pixels, control space, and we would say TOR, control space, and enter. 
and we wouldn't be telling the kid this, we would be asking the kid. Another um, important aspect of our coursework is we use the Socratic method uh, because we feel that the kid must learn to uh, take the English comment and then explore using the tools in the editor to be able to translate, which we feel is like real world programming. So we would say, okay, then what is the verb? And then we'd give them the hint of you can start typing and they'd start typing. And then over here on the right side, you can see that we've done examples for everything. Um, however, our examples purposely do not match. So if the kid is really stuck, they could copy and paste, but it wouldn't get them to the right answer. Now in this case, it's probably simpler. They could probably figure out 50. We would just say, how far is it? And then of course, we would ask them to run it after each line. So they would run it. And by this time they would be really happy. And then we would ask them, what do you do next? And hopefully they would say, get rid of the comment. What is the keyboard shortcut? So command D in the case of a Mac. And then which line do you do next? And hopefully they would say this one. And then we would say, read it out. And they would say, turn the tortoise to the right 90 degrees. We'd go shift enter. Uh, what is the noun? Hopefully they would say tortoise. And we'd say, what would you type? D-O-R, how would you complete it? Control space, and then press enter. What is the verb? Uh, hopefully they'd say turn, type T, notice T, degrees to the right. And then we would say, hopefully they'd say 90, and then they would run it. So you're kind of seeing the progression here, hopefully. And then there we go. And then we would say, what do you do here? And they would delete it. So um, you can see that we have a, a number of sections which we call courses. So we have uh, nine sections. We have some demo recipes that really just encapsulate some of our processes a little more quickly. If you need to do a five minute demo, these aren't really for the students. Um, and we have two sections in our code. Uh, the section that uh, we give to you for the kids just has the questions. The section that uh, you can work with as a teacher has the answers. So you can see if I expand this here and I go into recipes and we go into completed and we go into uh, section one for loops that this mirrors um, and in fact it has some additions here which I'll get into a little bit later in this talk. Uh, but if we go into simple square there is the answer per se. Now we don't um, uh, want this is for teacher preparation. This is not for the kids. The idea is that the kids must complete the um, each recipe, and they are written in a very specific order. Um, part of the course for design is uh, mastery-based learning, so it's very much like uh, uh, something like math, where uh, one builds on another, and uh, the uh, lessons or recipes are written in a specific order, and the sections are written in a specific order, so that uh, skills can be expanded upon. So that gives you kind of an idea of what the courseware looks like. Now for you as a teacher, we're going to return to the website and look at the resources that we've created um, in addition to the code to help support you in teaching this. So first navigating the website, it's really pretty simple. We have courseware, FAQ, team, and a donate because we're a nonprofit. Over here we have my Twitter. This leads to the main repository and this uh, allows you to give us uh, feedback. So if you click go to courseware, you can see, as I mentioned, this is kind of an index. So you have um, index for each of the sections. And this is a, a pretty big section uh, with a lot more detail on our instructional design principles. So intentional coding, mastery-based learning, incorporation of Agile and XP practices. And uh, I know that some teachers are really interested in this and some teachers are less. So we pulled it out as a separate section. This is the start of the courseware itself. And then when you go into each section, It'll explain to you the concepts that are taught. And then we have one sample video from the various lessons uh, in the section. So there'll be for between six and eight lessons in each course or section. And we'll only have one video here because uh, frankly, it takes a lot of time to make videos and our teachers have told us they prefer written information. In addition to the courseware, we have an FAQ, which I'm probably pretty much covering in this video. And then we have our team. We're a volunteer team, uh, mostly professional uh, developers. So just going through the resources, our code is found on our GitHub repository. So we have two different TKP Java repositories. The uh, sections are linked uh, through our website. 
The one that you'll be working with for your kids is Teaching Kids Programming Java. That's the one with the exercises and not the answers. We have a pretty extensive explanation of how to install. It's really not that difficult, but we do ask that you please read this because um, it does require that you perform these steps. We support installation on Windows and Mac. It's possible to install on Linux, I believe. I've done it once, but again, we're limited in resources, so this is what we are uh, giving instructions for. In addition to GitHub, we have our uh, YouTube channel. And again, all of these videos are linked at the various points in the courseware. But if you're a person who just prefers to watch videos, we have a playlist uh, around TKP Java for K through 12 teachers. So we have 14 videos there. And we also have a Java tips. Um, so if you prefer, you can just go directly to our YouTube channel. Uh, as I showed, we do advocate for using keyboard shortcuts. So we've got them here and you can print this out as a poster. Another thing that we have to work with is um, TKP Java language notes. And this is just an anchoring PowerPoint for some of the core language concepts. When you're teaching the concept, um, you can just show this slide as an anchoring slide. And this is in order as per our courseware. Um, I just find personally that when I, when I teach kids, it helps them to focus on some of the trickier language concepts. I mean, you can see things we have like hash maps and for eaching array lists, things that maybe are a little bit more abstract, especially if the kids are younger. Microsoft is offering a configurable in-browser editor associated with GitHub called Codespaces. And I've been doing a test with it, and I wanted to just include that here. So in this repository, I have a branch called Codespaces. And if I switch to that branch, there's a folder called Dev Container, which sets up the configuration for this custom code space. And I've already done this in advance. And once you uh, create a code space and you just click Create, uh, it will be persistent and it uh, turns on and turns off depends when you access it. So if I wanted to create another instance, I would just click this. Now because the first time that it spins up, it takes about five minutes to start. Um, I went ahead and did this in advance. So when you click this, what you get is you get this interface, which is the VS Code, and it loads all the files from the repository. So um, I've created a verification directory here just to make sure everything is working. And uh, you know this is just to make sure Java is working and to run it. It's just like the experience of running in an editor that is um, on your desktop. And you can see this is just printing hello TKP, TKP world. Now, if we want to use our libraries, um, so here we're using our libraries, which for the purposes of this test, I didn't even bother building them. I just um, included the source code in this branch just to make it a little bit um, simpler to work with. So uh, as you'll see here, this is just going to work with the tortoise a little bit. And so if I click in here and I go ahead and run this, it's going to print out some information down here. But the tortoise, of course, runs in a Java desktop window. So how do we do that? Well, we basically emulated it. And so if you click on ports here, we've emulated it in uh, VNC. And you can see that once it connects, there's our turtle and uh, we've drawn this. Now, if I go ahead and I update this to 150, and then I click Run, and I switch over here really quick like. You can see that uh, this is a similar experience to the desktop experience. Of course, the, the really positive aspect to this is the zero install. Um, so this is an interesting um, new direction for uh, our, our editor, and I'm excited about this. As of this recording, this is in beta, private beta, so you'd have to reach out to the Microsoft product team to get access to this, but I do have a teacher testing it. Um, also, we updated the virtual proctor utility, and uh, this is just at proctor.tkp.java.org, and so when you, on window close, it captures a screenshot. You can see there it updated. And this is just, you know, a helpful utility. So uh, when you're working with uh, TKP, uh, the resources are all indexed here off of our main site. Um, please read the FAQ. And uh, the uh, most important aspect of working with our resources that the, is that they are all free, but they're open source. Um, so we do have our, our open source uh, license um, referenced here. 
so we ask that you just give us attribution. Um, because we are an all-volunteer, extremely small organization, uh, we do not support, um, nor do we have courses or anything like that. This is really designed for teachers to use as part of whatever curriculum they are creating and has been used that way by teachers really all over the world. So, uh, you know, it's uh, gratifying to see over the many years that the TKP courseware has been around, um, the uh, students that have come through and have gone out to become software developers and all kinds of other great careers that are associated to software. So, happy teaching. I'm Lynn Langett. Thanks.